My name is John Rayfield with Rayfield Communications. This is the third in the series of training videos that shows how to set up the PC Client Dispatch software for use with the Seabridge controller system. When the PC Client application is first run, the screen will come up with all 20 possible connections or channels showing on the screen. And this can be changed within the configuration. To access the configuration, you want to click on the icon here with the two gears on it. And if this is the first time that the program has been run, a dialog will appear asking for a password and to verify that password. If you want password access to the system, then you would enter a password here and click OK. In this case, I'm going to just click OK without entering a password. Next, I'll click again on the icon with the two gears, and this will open up the configuration screen. Now there are two screens to this configuration dialog with tabs, one common and one per channel. We'll start with the one here, the common tab and we'll start up here at the top where we set the site name. Now the site name is going to be unique to this PC client running on this computer and that site name is how the Seabridge controller will identify this PC client. In setting up the Seabridge controller in the second video we used a site name of PC-OFFICE or office, PC-office, as a site name for a PC client. So that's what we'll enter here. Now here we have a couple of buttons that we can select. We have hold for talk or click on, click off. This is your PTT or push to talk action. With hold for talk it's going to operate like we're usually used to where we hold the PTT down to talk and let up to listen. It can be set to click on and click off, where you would click on and it would hold the PTT on until we click again on the PTT button on the screen. In most cases, we're probably going to want it set to hold for talk. Now we'll leave AGC disabled. We will not check the box. Audio boost, I have that set at 400. And the ratio select unselect, I've left at a default of 50. Now that is the ratio between select and unselect audio if you're using more than one channel or connection in the client program. So we'll leave that at default. Now all of these little boxes that are checked are for the various channels. As I mentioned, when the program first runs, all 20 are active. So all we have to do is uncheck them to turn off the channels or connections that we will not be using. In this case, I'm going to turn off all but one. Now, I need to make sure and click the Apply button before I go to the next screen, before I click on the Per Channel tab, or what I've done on this screen will not be saved. So I'm going to click on Apply, and when I do, you'll notice that the screen changed, and now I just have one channel or connection group of controls here. Now let's go to the Per Channel tab. Now the first control up here on the left is the jitter minimum setting, which can usually be left at zero. And then the next slider to the right is the jitter maximum setting. Now that can be increased here as high as 3,000 milliseconds or three seconds. In most cases, we'll want it lower. And I'm going to set this at about 300. Now that is dynamic, so if the jitter buffer has to go that high, it will. But it will go as low as zero if that's possible for the program to operate properly. But it will force the program to not go any higher than 300 milliseconds. The receive and send audio are the sound devices that we're using, and in this case we'll just leave them to Windows Multimedia Default. Sound buffers can be set up or down to compensate for the speed of the computer on which the PC client is running. If the computer happens to be a little slower, the sound buffers may need to be increased 
or if there's more applications running besides the PC client. We may need to increase the sound buffer slightly. Otherwise, those can be reduced. The Enable LTR Proceed Tone is a Proceed to Talk Tone, which we want checked. Volume is the volume for that Proceed to Talk Tone, which I find uh, comfortable setting at 10. The field for primary server is going to be the IP address of the Seabridge controller. So I'm going to type in that address for the controller to which I'm going to connect with this client. I've got 69.27.157.130. Now the secondary server could be a secondary backup server or controller. In this case I have none. Cross patch name will leave blank. We aren't using any kind of uh, predefined cross patches in the system. The courtesy tone is the tone at the end of transmission, uh, like we have in the Moto Turbo radios. And we have a selection of different sounds here. I personally prefer the beep 3x sound. And I can set the volume for that, that beep, uh, that courtesy tone at 8. And then I have a label for identity. And I'm just going to call that Springfield. Now, again, if I don't click Apply, it's not going to keep any of this information even if I click OK. So I'm going to click Apply and that will have saved that information. Now we'll notice that when I do this that over here I have a couple of little colored dots that are now green and it shows here connection and sound. That means that I have a connection from this client to the Seabridge controller and a connection into the sound system in the computer. Now notice here if I take out the IP address again and I click apply and you'll notice here that now I'm going to lose my connection to the server. So let's go ahead and put our IP address back in. Click apply and it should in a few seconds here connect and I have two green dots. Now if I wanted to set up additional channels and remember, this is where I could click on these. For example, I check the number two, click apply, and now I have two channels that I can use to connect into the Seabridge server. Of course, these channels, as we're calling them, could be different ID codes on the same controller. They could even be different controllers, different IP Site Connect systems. In order to set the channel parameters for this, I would use this slider here. And you'll notice as I move up, the middle number here just went to 2, and then 3, and 4, and so forth. So I would select the one that I want, like 2. I would fill in the information and click Apply. Now in this case, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go back, and I'm going to turn off my second channel, and I'm going to click on OK. Then I can move my channel control here wherever I want to. And I can widen it out a little if I want to, uh, or narrow it down. If I want it a little shorter, I can, sh I can shorten it some. So that's basically how to set up the PC client. Operation is very simple. We have a volume control here, which adjusts the receive volume. We have a transmit volume here, which adjusts the transmit volume, and every channel or connection will have its own receive and transmit volume. So that makes it very easy to set it to match specific systems that we're tied into uh, if we're tying into different IP Site Connect systems or even analog systems. The PTT button here is very simple. We key down to talk. We let up to listen. To exit the program, we can simply click here to quit, or we can click on the X in order to close the program. One other uh, item we might mention is the status. So that wraps up the training for the PC client for use with the Seabridge system.